Three, two, one, go! It has an energy rifle. My introduction to the world of VR gaming was a little bit of a slow one. After spending a bit of time with horror games like Dread Halls and Affected the Mansion, I didn't really feel like I was getting bang for my buck. That was until I finally gave Robo Recall a try. As an Oculus Rift exclusive and available for free once you've activated your touch controllers, it's a downright ludicrous shooting game developed by Epic Games and expectedly running on the Unreal 3 engine. It's probably the most goddamn fun I've had shooting things in recent memory. In fact, the last time I remember being this giddy in a shooting game was the release of Doom and the Dusk Pre-Alpha last year. Released in March, it's one of the must-own titles for the Oculus Rift, and if you own a Rift, there's no reason to not have it. So, Sunny Jims, let's get to recalling and see what the whole thing is about, shall we? Now, despite the fact it's really an arcade game at heart, Robo Recall does a decent enough job of setting up the story. Set in the distant future when robots have become commonplace, you take on the role of a repairman, dubbed a recaller, working for the Robo Ready Corporation. After some sort of virus causes all the robots to go nuts, you're sent into three different areas of the city to recall the defective units as damage control and protect the company's reputation. The main antagonist is a giant robot named Odin, who serves as the boss fight throughout the third level of each of the three episodes, getting progressively more trickier each time as you'd kind of expect. That's right, I touched the internet and I saw that it was good. Robo Recall doesn't take itself very seriously, and there's lots of tongue-in-cheek jabs at the bureaucracy of Robo Ready, how they're more concerned with the future of their company and their shareholders than they are with the fact that there's hundreds of their robots going around apparently murdering everyone. But it's all in good fun, and the whole game has a very light-hearted and satirical tone. It reminds me a lot of the commercials from the Robocop films. Oh boy, here he comes! Now, recoiling is a tough job, right? It's not without its fair share of workplace hazards, so you're not sent in empty-handed. You've got a pistol and a revolver which act as your sidearms, then a shotgun and an energy rifle, all of which can be dual wielded. Equipping these weapons is pretty neat. You grab the pistols and revolvers from your hips as if they're holsters, and you can pull the shotguns and energy rifles off your back. It feels really cool doing this during combat, especially with the pistols as if you're quick drawing against the robots like some kind of futuristic gunslinger. It is a bit of a shame the weapon lineup is so limited, but there are numerous upgrades for each weapon, which I think kind of makes up for it. You can upgrade your pistols to eventually be fully automatic, your revolvers to fire two shots at once, and also upgrade the shotgun to have laser sights and explosive ammo. One of the major issues in playing with VR is the motion sickness, and I think it's something that's going to get to most people eventually. However, Robo Recall has a pretty neat way of handling this. Instead of it being a matter of just using the touch controllers to move around as if it's a normal analog stick, you instead push the left thumbstick in any direction you want to teleport to, able to change your direction at the same time. Imagine the blinkability and dishonor, but now you've got control over your orientation as well, and it sounds confusing and yet kind of is at first, but it becomes really easy to do after a little while of playing. Plus, it's got the added bonus that it removes the motion sickness issue entirely. I was playing for about two hours straight, and aside from sweating my balls off from standing up for so long, I had absolutely no motion sickness whatsoever. Compared to a game like Dread Halls, it had me wanting to vomit after like five minutes. What this also means is that you're mostly standing in one place the entire time, which means hopefully you won't be banging into walls or doors when you're in combat. That's a problem I had in other VR games like Dread Halls and Superhot. I actually broke the thumbstick off my touch controller playing Superhot this way because I somehow ended up right in front of my computer desk. It was like Wii Tennis all over again. Looking down at the ground has an outline that lets you know which direction is forward, so you can always coordinate your teleportation to make sure you're facing where you want to be facing. Despite the fact there's only really 9 levels in the entire game, the sheer amount of replayability makes up for it easily. The amount of shit you can pull off in this game is just incredible, and even after playing it for 5 or 6 hours, I'm still figuring out little tricks and cool things to pull off. Grab robots and literally rip them in half, or catch a rocket or bullet in midair and redirect it back to an enemy. One of my favorites is how you can juggle an enemy in the air as long as your weapon is loaded, but the list just goes on and on. You can also quite literally dodge bullets in this game by kind of weaving back and forth like you're Neo in the Matrix. There's basic robots that have pistols or shotguns, then there's bigger robots that have shields that you have to either destroy or teleport around. Special robots are able to be held onto, controlling their abilities for a short period of time, and a larger armored robot can even be ridden and controlled before it overheats and explodes. I also like picking up the little spider robots which explode when they're thrown at other enemies. Odin makes up the boss fights in the game as I said, and beating him is about catching his rockets, sending them back at him, and targeting his weak spots. These fights make use of every single mechanic and skill you've learnt throughout the game, and the final confrontation is suitably challenging. 
it's kind of hard to not get into the action a little bit. At one point I was stylishly pulling the guns out of their holsters, spinning around and shooting enemies like I'm in a John Woo film. And for a moment I really got caught up in the whole thing. Shooting a bunch of robots with your left hand, flipping out your pistol with the right before pulling out a shotgun again with the left, and juggling enemies in the air and dodging bullets, it's just so immensely enjoyable. Watching gameplay and hearing people talk about it doesn't really do it justice, and it's not until you've actually got the headset on and have those two controllers in the palm of your sweaty hands that you really just see how much fun it all is. It also looks and sounds amazing, and there's a soundtrack in this game that I think is criminally underrated. As you probably noticed from the footage, there's also a leaderboard system and all manner of multipliers and kill types popping up on the screen, and you're really encouraged to be as creative as possible during combat to get a higher score. Simply shooting robots with your guns is fine, but you'll get a much better result for thinking outside of the box, and a lot of the levels have specific requirements to get even greater end level scores. Like finishing an entire level without using a single gun, or by, say, recalling 10 robots by killing them with their own bullets. That is to say, catching the bullets they fire at you and redirecting them back. Move to the intersection, So what's the problem with Robo Recall, you're probably wondering. Well, I guess I could say the length is a bit of an issue, but then again, most people I'd say getting the whole thing for free. And look, the whole crux of VR, especially VR games where it's ideal to stand up, is that you don't really want to spend all that much time on your feet, nor really even can you. I mean, this isn't like playing Fallout New Vegas or Overwatch, where you can sit comfortably in your big leather computer chair with a cup of tea and a podcast in the background. This is a game that almost takes a physical toll on you, like every time I finished a level I'd just have to take a 5 or so minute break, walk around my apartment, have a glass of water and take a few deep breaths. I always had this huge red marking around my face from where the headset was sitting, it would often be damp from sweat and my hair just wouldn't sit right for hours afterwards. There's a few times when my senses would shit themselves and I'd totally lose my position, forcing me to pause the game and realign myself properly, which also kind of takes you out of the moment. I suppose I'd like it if there was some kind of endless mode where you can just hold out as long as possible against a never-ending barrage of spawning robots. A co-op mode would have been awesome as well, and maybe a few more weapons and levels couldn't have hurt either. But I genuinely can't think of all that much stuff to complain about, I'd feel like I'm just bringing up negative points for the sake of bringing up negative points. Like, I don't know, how about in this version of the future there's no flying cars or hoverboards, and also why the robots wearing low tops when they should be wearing something with more traction to accommodate their mobility. See how silly I sound? Overall, Robo Recall is supremely entertaining. It's one of the few games I've played so far with my Oculus Rift that has actually made me feel justified for shelling out so much money on the damn thing in the first place. It's a game that you want to get your friends to play, just so someone else can see how over the top the whole thing is, and the more you play it, the better you get, and the more enjoyable it ultimately becomes. I wouldn't say it's worth buying a Rift for on its own, but if we can get more games like this and more frequently, then there's a bright future ahead for FPS games in VR. Four, three. Two. Activation complete.